Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ashadu la ilaha illallah wa adhu la sharikulu. Ashadu lan Muhammad abdu rasulu. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We'd like to welcome everyone again to another segment of the Muslim Leadership Council's Under the Umbrella. It's a program where we highlight uh, the members and the, the organizations that are a part of the Muslim Leadership Council. Uh, and for those of you who have just chimed in, the Muslim Leadership Council is a nonprofit organization, umbrella organization, that has established itself since 2010. And the objective of the organization, the mission is to unite the Muslim community to protect and serve the interests of the Muslim community. And in doing so, today, we want to highlight two of our members and the work that they're doing in San Diego, uh, the work that they're doing during this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And we want to introduce today Sister Sonia Garcia with the Latino Foundation. And we want to introduce also uh, Sister Tasneen with the Passan Organization. We're going to allow our sisters to uh, explain a little bit about their organizations, uh, what work they've been doing, how long they've been doing it, and we'll have a few questions to uh, sort of highlight some of the things that they're doing. Um, we'll start out with, uh, however, we want to be recurrent with what's going on in our community. So we'll do an update, first of all. Uh, we'll ask Sister Ruhi to update us on the current situations and some of the programs that MLC is working on. Sister Ruhi. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah. Good to see everybody again and thank you for joining. Uh, I will start with the MLCSD free warm meal program. This, there is a huge need while we are still under the stay at home conditions. And Alhamdulillah, our program has served uh, more than 4,500 meals so far. And this was possible, uh, the delivery, it was like 99% of these meals were delivered by our courageous volunteers. Alhamdulillah, we have more than 2,000 volunteer hours for this. Uh, and again, these meals were uh, being delivered to our seniors, healthcare providers, uh, first responders, and all the San Diegans, uh, overall the San Diego County who have been impacted uh, by this situation and they are not able to go out or uh, and grab their meals or uh, do not have the resources. So this free meal program has been a huge help for those people and individuals and also large groups. The program, again, is going to be, inshallah, continuing uh, for this Ramadan. We are planning to continue this program and to have this program continue, we need your donations, we need your volunteer time. It has been very helpful so far. Thank you so much, Zakala Khair, for people who have donated. And to donate and continue this program, please visit our website, www.mlcsd.org. And talking about donations, this time we have updated our website and we have a donation page for all the nonprofit organization, our member organizations, uh, with their donation link going to their web pages. So if you go and visit our page, www.mlcsd.org, under the COVID-19 situation, you can see all the organizations. Alhamdulillah, we have about 26 to 27 organizations that we have provided the link. So it's a one place you can go and make your donations. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, one more program that we just recently started is the weekly Ramadan reflections of the Imams of San Diego. And this is a unique program where you can see all the Imams of San Diego County. Alhamdulillah, our second program is going to be this Sunday, 3 p.m. It's a weekly program. Please tune in and you get to see and listen to all our Imams. And the, pro the topic for this program is how to care of each other under the COVID-19 uh, situation. So inshallah, tune in and watch this program. Alhamdulillah. Jazakum hair, sister. Uh, we'll get an update on our current situation with uh, Sister Ismahan with the COVID-19 in the San Diego area, particularly. Sister Ismahan. Jazakum Allah khair and salamu alaikum. Subhanallah, just the update we have in San Diego County so far as of yesterday, Friday afternoon, uh, according to the Times of San Diego, uh, there has been 3,711 uh, cases uh, countywide. And amongst that, we had uh, about 134 deaths in San Diego specifically. Um, and when it comes to California in general, 
Um, and the deaths have been over 2,000. So subhanAllah, our hearts are with the families who are grieving and suffering during this time and who lost a loved one. Um, it's been really a tough time across the board uh, for everyone. I think the newest update is our uh, governor has outlined uh, specific phases that California will be will have to uh, go through before we can open up the entire state. Um, subhanallah. So right currently, right now, we're on the first phase that he outlined, um, and according to 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 news sources and according to what he mentioned, we're days away from. Um, subhanAllah, days or, or, or a few weeks away from uh, moving on to the second stage, uh, subhanAllah. So I think the key thing here is while there has been a little bit of a loosening of restrictions, last time we mentioned about uh, the beaches, subhanAllah, uh, something interesting to note is the continued protests that have been happening in San Diego County of, of individuals um, that are trying to get the state to be reopened. Um, subhanAllah. And I just want to make sure that we're urging our community members to understand and know that the criteria that we're, we're, that, we're, that we're following is not necessarily these protests that are happening, but also the medical advice and the leadership of our uh, uh, state, uh, SubhanAllah, and our county officials to make sure that we continue to be safe and protect our most vulnerable uh, during these moments, inshallah. Yeah. So while there has been a lot of a hiccup, um, just understand those updates have happened. And as of yesterday, May 1st, uh, everyone in the county must wear masks. So if you're leaving your home, please make sure that you put a mask on. Um, SubhanAllah, it has become mandatory in San Diego County. Uh, so whether you're going to go get groceries or you know do anything that was essential, make sure that you are wearing a mask, inshallah. Jazakumullah. Yeah. Thank you, Sister Ismahan, for the update. Now we'll get to the best part of our program. We'll get to speak with two of our most dynamic sisters out here uh, in the San Diego community that are doing some very important things uh, and some very necessary things. Um, I know that uh, Sister Tasneen has been working with a different group, uh, a multiple uh, of different groups and, and people and organizations in the Northern area, I believe, in San Diego. So uh, if you will, Sister Tasneen, uh, tell us a little bit about PASAN, uh, what your mission is and your goals, and how are you doing and coping with the uh, COVID-19 environment? And then we'll speak to Sister Sonia about the fantastic work she's doing as well, inshallah. Sister Tasneen, please. Asalaamu As Alaikum, brother. And, uh, yeah. Thank you so much. I'm very excited, actually. You guys invited uh, me on behalf of Pasan. Jazakallah uh, khair. I just let you know that Pasan uh, is, we started uh, in 2016 in San Diego. It's based in San Diego. And it's a uh, non-profit charity organization. We are actually um, working in different projects under this, but uh, our uh, main thing is that this organization, Pasan, is for to, Pakistan, to promote Pakistani culture, heritage, Urdu language, and mainstream of USA. Promote uh, you know home-based businesses, uh, women businesses, uh, for empowering the community. Also provide community services in San Diego individually and with the collaboration and uh, with different organizations. Um, we are not only in the Northern area, we based in, uh, in the Northern area, but we have volunteers uh, mm -hmm. in different areas in San Diego, okay. uh, in like Chula Vista, National City, uh, Carlsbad, Oceanside, and uh, the area, Northern area, we are from, you know, Scripps Ranch, Poway, Mira mm -hmm. Mesa, Rancho Bernardo, different areas we have volunteers sure. and uh, we worked together to promote our services. Mm -hmm. For, you know, to get our, our mission and the goals is to come together, help each other uh, to, to serve the community and our nation as an American. Mm -hmm. So this is, our, this is our goal. And we have different programs under that. Uh, one, you know, I can tell you one by one which programs. We have different programs. So one program is uh, to helping, you know, in different ways in family, uh, family uh, assistance in mm -hmm. financial and housing. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and we also help them uh, if we have a youth we have youth program for youth leadership and some other programs for uh, whatever they want to do under mm -hmm. the um, you know uh, in pakistani culture heritage and urdu language we mm -hmm. organize the events mm -hmm. till now we didn't take any grant and uh, usually we organize the exhibitions mm -hmm. and their revenues you know help us to accomplish our goals for mm -hmm. the community uh, this exhibition is not only for clothing and jewelry we also have you know art uh, events for art lit literatures small businesses like medical medicare uh, for assistance for seniors financial assistance um, we usually organize uh, pakistani visa camps over here with the help mm -hmm. of pakistani consulate in los angeles for uh, los angeles they usually come over here and we have a uh, good for the community pakistani mm -hmm. community if they need visa or their um, nicop cards or anything so they can make over here hmm. they can apply over here in our visa camp also whenever you know we received any call or any information or any uh, thing from the community if we evaluate the case we have a uh, team they evaluate the case and what whatever they need we usually refer uh, them to connect them to a right person and right organization if they are helping mm -hmm. and like uh, since we are a member of mlcsd i'm very thankful to them because uh, whenever we need now they are assisting us through a different organizations and it's a good uh, thing for person to be a part of mlcsd so this is yeah this is our thing and other than that you know if any other organizations if they are organizing fundraisers over here they ask help we usually help them to organize the events for them mm -hmm. and uh, we used to do that and we are doing it and in future we are planning with the need like uh, women shelters we help it now and some other cancer organization like uh, lycomia and lympho lympho society they are fighting mm -hmm. for cancers mm -hmm. like uh, you latin organization sister you know sonia is here when mm -hmm. she needs help we give them a free booth in our exhibitions to mm -hmm. generate their you know for donations or you know help them mm -hmm. so Masha that Allah, way so we have that's where we help the community mashallah so, so it sounds like it sounds like you have a huge team how many people are on, are on your team um, you know we have our website you can go www.person.org and we have long list of volunteers over there ah. our mostly volunteers are related to a medical field so okay. so that's how we get the help if they we need any medical assistance or so they help us and uh, Uh, also you know we provide community hours for high schoolers mm -hmm. and internship uh, if uh, last year of medical college students from pakistan india and bangladesh we help them to find an internship over here in santiago mm -hmm. in ucsd Inshallah. yes Inshallah. this is our program alhamdulillah so um, i know that there's several questions uh, sister uh, ismahan uh, i think yeah, we were discussing pasan and their good work you had a couple questions or a question for sister tasni uh yes but i would love to hear from sister sonia subhanallah oh. <laughs> for the latino muslim foundation and then okay. we can well we yeah i was going to have one at a time but let's go to oh. sister sonia then that way we can put all of our questions together good idea sister sonia assalamu alaikum sister wa alaikum uh, assalam we've heard lots about the latino muslim foundation so yes. please uh give us more information share with us what your organization is doing Uh, how you supporting and helping uh, the muslim and the non muslim community as you are sister sun uh, assalamu alaikum thank you for inviting me um yeah basically uh, our organization it's uh, not too old it's kind of new um and we see there is a lot of necessity necessities in the in the community uh everywhere you know among muslim non muslims Uh, here in San Diego in Mexico mm -hmm. so uh, we basically uh, start the foundation in 
about 2016, uh, 17, and we got in, in 18, we got the approval. And we start seeing who is the need, what kind of the need in, is being in, taken along that as already organization here in San Diego or in US doing the same thing. So we're trying to focus something different that mm -hmm. there is different areas that we can cover with mm -hmm. uh, among the re refugees people, among the immigrant people. Uh, we have a lot of emergency relief uh, and whatever uh, who's or, or who's contact us and tell us how you can help us. There is need in this. So we start, we jump, join them and, and looking, you know, uh, we have, a, we start also program for, uh, for the new Muslims, for uh, uh, the people who wants to know about Islam, the river people. Uh, yeah. We basically, we have a group with the sisters teaching them how, uh, what is about Islam because uh, a lot of Latinos start uh, looking or searching for, for who are the Latinos Muslims and they find out there is not so many like they can uh, start helping or teaching them. So uh, we do the class in Islamic Center of San Diego Sunday. Uh, we talk about Islam and people come and join and some of them they like it and they start having different uh, things about Islam mm -hmm. and then uh, as I told you, you know we focus on the things that other nonprofit organizations are doing and uh, Alhamdulillah has been successful because we can see where exactly what or which we're gonna with especially with the emergency relief when it comes uh, is one of the our priority a step in helping the vulnerable people the people mm -hmm. who is in need uh, mm -hmm. doesn't matter what is your faith or your culture uh, everybody needs to get a chance of that and alhamdulillah uh, i will we were ab able to do that and to help each other so hopefully that Absolutely. our organization and i i love to to work or to be part of any other organization that are helping because i think a uniting it makes the difference and the Muslim, the Muslim work, you see it when it comes together among the sister, the brother, and it's gonna be more people join and the majority of the world, they'll see that Muslims, uh, when we have emergency relief, they are the one step in to help, mm -hmm. especially for the, the, this pandemic thing is happening, alhamdulillah. Yes. alhamdulillah. Well, alhamdulillah, just like I'm here, Sister Frick, sharing with us what the organization is about. I know that you uh, you also had a, uh, did you mention your, a food program or a feeding program across the border? Uh, is yes. your organization involved with that? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. yes, we have, we have that. About how many people are you uh, feeding or or come for, for help in that process? There is, there is a lot right <clears throat> now. Uh, they search for us and they they know that we are going to a different places and as I, I was telling you about uh, one of the uh, I think I was telling brother goes you know uh, I received many uh, texts that uh, how can I get this food how can I get uh, how can you drop some stuff for me I am elder elder people how how we how we can do this so it's a little bit challenge for me to start looking who is in need. Most of the people right now is the elder people who cannot go outside. So I, in this, in this right now happening, I searched from one of the sisters uh, in the community and asked her, uh, I need food, I need a, a, um, a little bit, uh, uh, you know, food baskets to make for the elder people. So alhamdulillah, we got that. Uh, we make it food baskets and uh, that I pick it up from the sisters or I pick it up from the store or whatever it is in it and we drop it to the people at the door. We get the address, uh, we get the um, address privately and then uh, my job is right now to most of those people uh, drop at home at the door the food. Right. Right. And uh, <clears throat> it's been it's been very successful and it's very nice yeah, because you feel lot. the people uh, they asking us Muslims 
how can we get the help how we can how you can help us mm. and as i told you it's not about the religion um and most of those are latinos uh, mm. latinos elder people uh, who asking uh, to help us to help them with the food baskets and alhamdulillah as well some of them immigrants that they don't want to be known that the status right, right. And they're all, they're also asking us how you can, how we can get the help, how we can get this. And Alhamdulillah, it's, it, it, here in San Diego, it's so beautiful because you see there is a lot of need and they contact you because they know you're Latino and they think or they're hoping that they're going to get something as, as the time. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. It's, been, it's been very successful. Alhamdulillah. Sister Ismahan, you had a question, comment. Yes, uh, subhanAllah, my dear sisters are so humble to talk about their services. Um, I know just they both have been rising to the occasion, making masks and um, feeding individuals that are in need, uh, subhanAllah, as well as really just responding to these times. And maybe we can go into that a little bit later about the amazing work that you've been doing, especially during this uh, specific pandemic. Uh, so my question for you is really thinking about the challenges that you both face um, in, in, in the work that you do and how difficult it is to continue providing a lot of these services that you do and just really continue to connect uh, with a sector of the community that maybe other organizations have not meaningfully connected with. So subhanAllah, you're both at the forefront of really representing um, two sectors of our community that is critical. So looking at the current situations and the work that you've been doing, as well as just looking forward towards the future, what are some of your hopes and concerns uh, that you personally have, um, whether it's coming from uh, a place of really understanding uh, the current situation or just any hopes that you may have? What are some of the hopes that you have for the communities that you serve? And what have been some of the challenges? And what are ways that we can support you? Sister Tasneen. This is, you know, COVID-19 is uh, really uh, something new for us because we never see this before. So it's a big challenge for us as far as, you know, when you're concerned, everything is based on the finances. And uh, the main thing we faced, the financial, you know, assistance. But Alhamdulillah, other organization under MLCSD, they helped us. Uh, since I, you know, I to, as I told you before, we never had a grant and apply for that, so that's why we face that. So in future, yes, we are planning to work on that. So in case of emergency, we should have our funds. But because you know, the, we based on our exhibitions, and they all are cancelled. So if they are cancelled, so we don't have any revenues. So that's the thing. First thing, you know. Uh, People contacted us about the food and uh, housing, uh, financial assistance. So ex uh, first we work on accessing food and housing, medical services assistance, um, uh, connect them for employments, um, also connecting a small business owners for financial assistance. So help, uh, um, you know, groceries for uh, seniors, we have volunteers, they help them for their grocery shopping and their food uh, requirements. Also, we have volunteers, they sew the fabric mask for this COVID-19 and we provide this, those for seniors in Pave area and uh, Rancho Bernardo area, over 1,000 in Scripps hospitals. So over 1,000 we did it and then we had, you know, lack, you know, we didn't have the supplies, so we stopped doing it but our doctors friends they came up with a plan to provide mask you know surgical and non-surgical mask and uh, testing kits emergency testing kits so that helped us to provide our volunteers for emergency testing uh, before they go on work also you know pakistani students they were stuck over here they contacted us so we uh, asked MLCST, we asked the Pakistani Consulate Journal, and uh, we really appreciate both services. 
they helped us also uh, some, one of the Jewish community uh, organization from San Diego, they helped us uh, to provide the help to Pakistani students in San Diego. So I think uh, BFI, in, the, in three, four weeks, we were in panic, what we are going to do. But now we know where we're supposed to go for help and where we're supposed to uh, connect the people to help. So now we all are, alhamdulillah, on the uh, same page under MLC, uh, MLCSD umbrella. So, yeah, so we are working together and I'm very um, excited and uh, thankful from our person team. Uh, they all are, you know, very happy to uh, get the help from the or different organizations. Alhamdulillah. Excellent. So, I mean, it, it's great that the community is, is joining you and supporting yes. you in, in providing that kind of assistance. That's a, that's a wonderful thing. Uh, um, also, also, our Pakistani Consulate General, I really appreciate, you know, Abdul Jabbar Mehman Saab, he always, you know, he always talk about if they, we need any help. This time mm -hmm. they really help for, you know, whatever we need for Pakistani students. And also they recognize the person is working for, you know, Pakistani community in San Diego. It's a big achievement for, you know, person organization. Thank you so much for having Excellent. Mm -hmm. And and I would guess, Sister Sister Sonia, you have uh, the same question. I would assume, Sister Isfahan, you know, what are some of the hopes and and what are some of the challenges that you're facing? Um, you know, we I believe we always gonna have emergencies, uh, either is pandemic or work. Uh, any any emergency, uh, we I think we're gonna face this. But this one is uh, this one and this one right now. Uh, give us like a pause or about think, you know, what is the, is very, very special because the economic impact came and the lockdown that we have to face, our mask has to be shut down. And the salary economic when uh, not as we expected and our work behind stop everything. Everything we have, our life is has to stop. So, um, seeing this, uh, there is a, a lot of challenge we all we all gonna face. But the good things, it's that I believe uh, stepping uh, in all the organization, helping each other, and uh, um, having having emergencies funds for emergency things like this. I think is one of the the priority I'll, I'll make I see. because we don't know where is going to be the emergency, the emergency and then uh, suddenly you see yourself you don't have funds and then you start reaching the people exactly. and you start reaching the community who can give who, who can donate to buy food baskets who can donate to this but at the same time people are without job without without uh, income Mm -hmm. And you know we depending on the donation as well. Uh, alhamdulillah, I think uh, uh, it came my attention. Not only have uh, food for 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 people, uh, have have a, a, like a plan of package uh, mm -hmm. when we lose our job, when we cannot pay our bills. And I know uh, one organization is working in that, and uh, we are we are in in, in talking about. Uh, having having uh, talk together about about how we can help next time mm -hmm. the community where we have the funds ready for them and alhamdulillah the budget also the mosque local mosque is being helpful because they have the saka and they mm -hmm. have things that we can you know uh, get into the funds and mm -hmm. as well our community i think it's number one i always appreciate and i Thanks to my community because when we have emergency, they always step in, even if it's mm -hmm. a small amount. But alhamdulillah, it makes a big difference with that. Okay, to put a put to put sort of a real spin on that. I mean, we're not talking about a lot of money here when you say help and and every little bit counts. So, what what are we saying? You know, are you saying five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, five thousand dollars? What kind of money? What kind of money? You know, is helpful for you? I mean, 
kind of give us a picture on that, a real picture. Of with, of, absolutely. With $50, you make a lot of differences. With $100, you make more differences. Mm -hmm. uh, there is, there is like the way, you know, the hot meals they're doing in right now for $5, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, food baskets for twenty dollars, thirty dollars, fifty dollars. It is a lot of make it a lot of different, and we have to think about to have. Alhamdulillah, uh, Latina has some emergency funds for that, so okay. we'll be able to 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 accommodate some of the need, uh, and then we start uh, searching the community, looking the community uh, mm -hmm. to help because we can cover we can cover few communities another nonprofit can cover another communities but there is some communities left behind that they don't want to the community they don't want to ask for help because mm -hmm. of the status or any situation that they are going through or they're shy or they're scared so this little community is the one latina it will take care of it because their situation is Total different that anybody in the United States working with the papers. And unfortunately, that community, vulnerable community, is hiding. And with a little money, it makes the difference. It's starting with the $20, $5, $10. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Sister Ruby, I think you had a question or two that you wanted to ask the other uh, sisters. I think Alhamdulillah, it's great how you shared about what your organization does and also how yeah. you were able to do certain programs under these conditions that we are going through. But I just would like to know uh, in like very quickly in short, like how when you first went through this situation of COVID-19, what was the biggest challenge that you faced at that time and how you were able to manage it? Sister Tasneem, if you would start. I actually, I, as I just told before, you know, it, this is new thing for us, for everyone. We never seen this kind of situation before. So there are a lot of challenges we were facing yeah. because we didn't know what to do at, at the beginning. Exactly. And it was panic because whenever, you know, ask someone and they have no clue. So exactly. it True. was very hard to find out the solution, but Alhamdulillah, you know, we all work together and brainstorming and whatever their access, everybody, you know, offered us, we can do this, we can do that. Yeah. So that's how we, work, you know, everything with all the challenges we faced and it went gone. So now yeah. we are still facing some challenges, but they are not uh, that, you know, we are saying, oh, where are we supposed to go? So I think we are all really yeah. yeah, we are all learning as we are going because we exactly. never did something like this. Yeah. yeah. Sister Sonia, what do you say when first this happened? What was the biggest challenge and what was uh, really challenging for you that you couldn't handle and how did you learn and overcome? It's, it's the same thing, you know, is to look who is the people in need. Yeah. What what did they need? Did they need food? Did they need mask? Did they need money? So it's like looking about among that, uh, I start sending emails, first of all, sending email, uh, sending messages to the community, who can support with masks, who can support with food, who can give us this, who can give us that. Alhamdulillah, it's a challenge because not too many people answer. Yeah. But the, the people who answer, Alhamdulillah, gave me the mask, gave me the food, gave me the money to buy food, and and we, we we will be able to 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 break the challenge you know yeah. to break that to continue to say yes we can we can we can serve the community even though you go you take the food baskets you put it outside the door with the mask that's it you don't yeah. have to talk to the people you don't have to say anything and it was a different experience for us uh, and also very satisfied for for us so you to, tapped into your network and resources and to overcome this challenge. Alhamdulillah, that's just really nice, mashallah. Yes, yes. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. I was just saying, alhamdulillah, it's fantastic that what we've all learned uh, as separate organizations in San Diego, uh, in this sort of 
the idea of separate organizations or communities sort of striving and trying to struggle and deal with issues, uh, life issues and community issues and political issues and immigration issues alone, uh, the Muslim Leadership Council has afforded everyone to know that in unity and with, with networking amongst ourselves as Muslims in the community, that there are lots of resources and lots of solutions to a lot of the challenges that we face. And we find that also our solutions to challenges we face are examples for non-Muslim communities. You know, the very fact that we do things and how we do things uh, has kind of shown the way that this is how humanity kind of works. And so it's, it's a beautiful thing. You know, because each of you, again, by being members of the MLC, uh, have learned just by networking with your own members and organizations under the umbrella has really been a helpful thing. You know, it's, 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 the, it's the example of what we should do in practice, and that's a beautiful thing. Sister Ismahan, any, uh, I mean, Sister uh, yeah, Ismahan, any, any last words on, on our session today uh, with the, uh, the sisters here? Jazakumullah khair, and I actually uh, don't have too many words, subhanAllah. They're doing amazing work, uh, subhanAllah, just looking, um, Sister Tasneem, I'm hoping to, to get to know your organization uh, more and work with you. Sister Sonia, subhanAllah, almost half of the cases that we have um, for asylum seekers have talked about the wonderful services that they receive from the Latino Muslim and foundation of uh, subhanallah when they were crossing uh, the border so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all and uh, continue to give, grant you tawfiq and and uh positive endeavors inshallah moving forward inshallah yeah. thank inshallah. you so much for joining and sharing about your organization and we got to know about your organization alhamdulillah it's amazing and also for all the people who have joined us and watching this uh, please keep on uh, watching under the umbrella program under the MLCSD pro uh, program and uh, we will be joining us uh, joining uh, every week Alhamdulillah coming up with the MLCSD updates and also COVID-19 updates and uh, we will have another couple of member organizations that will talk about their history what they are doing and how they are dealing with the situation Alhamdulillah Inshallah. Again, as the sisters and everyone is saying, Jazakum Hair for your time, your effort, and thank you for joining us and, and, and chiming in on what the Muslim Leadership Council is doing these days. May Allah grant us peace and grant us, uh, you know, uh, the, the ability to continue our services and uh, bless us with the, the proper actions and the proper mindsets to continue this work, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum